Ja, guten Abend, liebe Gäste, sehr verehrte Damen und Herren, sehr geehrter Thomas Mayer, Rektor der Zürcher Hochschule der Künste, liebe Olia Lialina, herzlich willkommen, schön, dass Sie heute Abend den Weg zu uns ans Kollegium Helvetikum gefunden haben. Mein Name ist Christian Ritter, ich bin heute Abend Ihr Host, ich bin hier am Kollegium Helvetikum zuständig für den Forschungsbereich Kunst. Medien und Design und ähm, freue mich äh, deshalb besonders, dass wir heute Olia Lialina zu Gast bei uns haben. Wir haben zurzeit eine Forschungsperiode am Laufen hier am Institut zum Thema Digital Societies. Ähm, das ist ein Thema, an dem sehr viele Wissenschaften mitarbeiten, sich damit beschäftigen, Humanities, Science, Engineering, aber auch die Kunst und die Kunst auch schon zu einem sehr frühen Zeitpunkt, die sich interessiert hat sozusagen diese, für die Verbindungen von Sozialwelt und Technologie. Das ist bei uns auch programmatisch. Das Collegium Helvetikum ist ein Institut, das von drei Zürcher Hochschulen getragen wird, nämlich von der ETH Zürich, der Universität Zürich und eben der Zürcher Hochschule der Künste. Diese Zusammenarbeit, also diese transdisziplinärer Anspruch, den wir hier haben, ist natürlich eine große Chance auch für uns, gerade zu einem Thema, das sehr stark technologiegetrieben ist, wie digitale Gesellschaft ähm, zu forschen, uns damit auseinanderzusetzen, sei es in der Arbeit unserer Fellows, aber eben auch durch die Gäste, die Vortragenden, die hier immer wieder ähm, zu Gast sind. Und gerade in den Künsten oder eben auch im Design gibt es natürlich schon sehr viel Erfahrung, sehr viel Wissen über diese Thematik und es ist toll für uns, dass wir hier in diesem Haus auch mit unseren Gästen davon profitieren können. Ich werde jetzt für die kurze Einführung auf Englisch wechseln. Der Vortrag wird auch in englischer Sprache sein, sodass unser Gast besser auch versteht, was ich hier sagen werde. So, I'm very excited to welcome tonight's speaker, Olia Lialina. Olia is a pioneer and, I will say, one of the best-known artists in network-based art. She is also a critic and curator and, since 1999, professor at the New Media Program at the Merz Academy in Stuttgart. After studying film criticism and journalism at Moscow State University, Olia Lialina became one of the first and still most important voices in artistic research on the aesthetics of digital culture. Her early work had, and obviously still has, a great impact on recognizing the internet as both a subject of research on visual culture and a medium for artistic expression and storytelling. Thanks to her ongoing attention to the internet architecture, net language, and what one may call the folklore of the internet, Olia is a popular and well-respected expert of contemporary art and new media theory. She published her work in different forms, from online tools, to gallery exhibitions, to books and papers, and maybe I can recommend one of these famous books to you. Some of you, some of you, of you will know that, uh, published together with Dragan Espenshi, Digital Folklore. And um, yeah. as you told me uh, before, books are sold out and value of the books is raising. So <laughs> I'm happy to have one. Olia also has created one of the earliest web galleries, Art Teleportarchia. Teleportarchia? Yes. And she is co-founder and keeper of the one terabyte of kilobyte H web archive. Olia is a high-profile conference speaker and teacher in arts and media, including engagements at the New Media Lab in Moscow, the University of Westminster, University of Graz, or Akademie der Bildenden Künste in München. It's a great pleasure to have you here and to learn more about your work, your research, your art, and of course, uh, we hope you will give us some insights into your fascinating web archives tonight. Thank you very much for being here. Thank you. Thank you very much, Christian. Thank you very much for being here. And thank you for allowing me to talk English I think, of course, somehow I would manage also to make it in, in German, but it would be too funny. 
you won't be. <laughs> Uh, I'm afraid. So, thank you. Oh, what happened? Nothing happened. Um, I will start right away, and I will start with something with a with a picture. Already for many years, I wanted to start a lecture. But I never did, so it's my personal premiere uh, today. And um, <clears throat> what's, uh, what's so special for me about this uh, cartoon? Uh, it was published in, uh, on the 5th of July, 1993. It's many years ago. But the 5th of July, I know exactly the date now, because it was also the date Exactly the date when my more to the mouth. Yeah, because it was exactly the date when my uh, daughter was born, and I was in Moscow. And uh, so you putting two these now facts together, I think you can understand that I couldn't see this uh, cartoon when it was published. Uh, it's only, but I also should say immediately that I was not the only one who didn't pay attention to it at that time. It became uh, popular and famous and um, also beneficial for its author much later. Um, and uh, not only because of this date, because I was busy with other things, but you know, in 1993 also, if I would see it, I wouldn't understand what is it about. It, uh, I just also finished um, uh, two weeks before it was published, I made my diploma in journalism uh, in Moscow, and I, uh, I delivered my paper on the type. It was made on the typewriter. And uh, of uh, all the people in our year, I know that we heard about one person who delivered her paper, printed, uh, uh, she made it on computer, and that it was, was printed. And I only remember it as uh, like something what was told. I also couldn't understand what they are talking about. But there was such thing. Uh, so computers and uh, uh, internet at this moment for me were somewhere very far, far away. Um, also, I will talk today about the World Wide Web, the early years of the World Wide Web. And, uh, but the dog is here, says, on the internet, nobody knows you have a dog. Though, again, 1993 is a very important year for the World Wide Web. It is when Mosaic Browser was released, meaning that people outside of Next Computer, so people of, on uh, uh, Linux, on um, uh, Mac and uh, on Windows, they could install a browser and make something and see something. But it, it was the year, but it didn't start immediately. The next um, picture I'm showing to you, it is a web page. It is a screenshot of, of the web page from 1999. So you can imagine there, till this moment, uh, web at this moment, the web was already omnipresent. Um, it was everywhere, and uh, even dogs were making their web pages, sometimes with the help with their mummies, and uh, sometimes they were, even could make it themselves. It was also, it's 99, and also for me, again, the year, as uh, Christian just mentioned, uh, I was at this, so six years later, six years in between these two images, and also for me, it's the time when I was already uh, teaching uh, art and design online in, in another country, so completely different life, different profession, different world, something what I couldn't think and imagine. And it's uh, in 1993. And it's not, you know, I'm telling to you now, not as a story of my uh, skyrocketing career or special skills 
I have. But it's a story about exactly about this time. It happened to so many people. Maybe it's happened to somebody in this audience that the appearance of the World Wide Web changed everything dr dramatically and completely. Maybe. Uh, also, please allow me now to make a meta comment on this screenshot before we continue. Uh, I will mostly show to you now the material from one terabyte of kilobyte H archive. This is an archive that I keep together uh, with my partner Dragon Espen Sheet. It's an archive of GeoCities websites. We have uh, 400,000 uh, websites of people that um, survived after they were killed by Yahoo in 2009. Uh, survived because archive team saved them. And we downloaded this archive, and this is where I spent, since 2011, all, almost all my time I spent inside this archive looking at these pages. And uh, this, again, you remember, this page is from 1999, and this is the year that Yahoo bought GeoCities. It is also important, and this is something not so spectacular, not that fact than the page itself, but you can see here that there is a so-called vanity profile. It's a name. It's not a um, neighborhood and the number of the house. It means it was already, the page was made after Yahoo bought GeoCities. And this also will be important in the um, following minutes when I show to you other um, examples. Uh, to, <clears throat> so, 20 years ago, Yahoo bought GeoCities, and GeoCities was the biggest place where people were hosting their web pages. In 2009, uh, Yahoo closed GeoCities, and uh, not just in 2009, but in two days, on 26th of October, it will be 10 years. So, 10 years of the World Wide Web without uh, personal pages that were hosted on GeoCities, and it's really a lot. And um, also, let me please mention that uh, Yahoo and other companies, they really continue actively to delete and delete and uh, uh, remove from the web everything what was uh, there. And uh, uh, in some time, just uh, now um, Jason Scott, some days ago, uh, he noticed that Yahoo very calmly announced that they are um, closing Yahoo forums. And I can imagine you think, um, uh, yeah, and so what? <laughs> I never had anything there, or nobody writes there now anyway. But that's why I put here the uh, link to the discussion that started after this tweet, and you will see what an importance uh, this um, <clears throat> service still, have, still has, and of course had at that time. So the last remark is that everything what I showed to you, in fact, I can go be more medium specific and show to you that we are inside the browser, and there is an address of this page, is profolio.org slash they may call it home, and you can access all this from your computers and also follow more links that, I'm, um, that I prepared for you tonight. So, yeah, let's continue. A lot had happened again in between 93 and uh, 1999. There is maybe you once um, had a chance to hold it in your hands. This is uh, on the Left, there is the whole internet catalog, users, guys, uh, the whole internet users, guys, and catalog. That was the first edition that was published in 1993. Uh, and uh, what is again interesting there, that um, at that moment, um, there are uh, from 500 pages more than 500 pages, there were only 10 uh, that were about the World Wide Web. Yeah, and uh, two of these pages were screenshots 
uh, of the uh, was screenshots of the websites. And uh, on the right, you see the last edition of the whole world catalog from 1999, and it's again more than 500 pages. And uh, only some of these pages are about how to um, how to connect to the internet, how to use email, and everything else is already World Wide Web, and what to find where and how how to make pages. So, and also it was the last one because it became it was clear that after it wouldn't be a, it wouldn't be ridiculous even to imagine to publish a catalog again. So, uh, uh, talking, yeah, I'm all the time presenting to you this time frame, 93, 99, and uh, let's say it's a bit artificial and more connected, more formalistic and connected to these pictures um, I had or to these catalogs. Of course, we could talk about time frame from 93 to uh, 2006, so the very beginning and then arrival of the Web 2.0, so like the second wave. Or about, we could talk what happened during the dot-com in between 97 and 2001. Or we could start in 1989 and not in 1993 because in 1989 Tim Berners-Lee invented the World Wide Web. But I really prefer to count from 93 um, be because this is when people really started to use it and this is when they made it the medium as um, the influential one, the bright one, and really very important one. Or one can, could also, you know, there is a saying that uh, somebody, once, um, somebody once again mixed up do dogs and internet and started to talk about uh, the internet years, and it was exactly like with dogs, it was seven years. Yeah, so there is a saying that uh, uh, one internet year is seven human years. Yeah, things like this. Or well, sometimes, but it's uh, nobody can say who invented this comparison, but uh, Jim Clark, the uh, producer of Netscape, of the one of the first browsers, he was also. Uh, when he was writing about internet time, very fast time, he was very much pushing this idea. And then there's some other, you know, it's quite, uh, yeah, it's interesting, this uh, time question, because when I usually say, yeah, okay, it's seven years, but also there is a uh, hundred years in between 96 and 97, because there's, there was such a change in everything in the technologies. And uh, also... As you can imagine, there were not only two books written about the Internet. There were a lot, and what you see here from my collection that is called, um, as the title of one of the books, Bring Your, uh, Bring Your Talent to the Web, um, it was, um, yeah, there were just, uh, there are much, much more. And they all, but here, what you see here, all of them, they are mostly written in, um, in, in 96, 97, um, 98. Uh, some of them, by the way, it's, uh, I, I would never, I never looked or bought these books uh, that time when they were published. And now I'm sort of punished for this because it's almost the only literature I consult or I'm able to consult, or that may, let's say that makes sense to consult when you uh, think about the um, World Wide Web. But some of them uh, can help you not only with the finding the information about the old, not existing anymore web pages, but also this, where my mouse point is now, creating killer websites, quite a legendary book for web designers, for the early web designers. And now, you know, also, even me, myself, I talk to you and I say the old pages, the web pages of the 90s, yeah? as if there is uh, something what we can describe as an old, as a, such a homogeneous old mess. But in this book that was, 19, uh, what was written in 1996, the author already sees and clearly distinguishes three periods 
in their history of the web of web design, not just of the web, but out of web design. So there was a completely another also um, idea about the time and about the generation. And mostly these books, they were there to help you to make a web page. At the same time, they, none of the authors of this book would miss a chance to say something nasty about what people do online. So the production, amateur production, was constantly criticized and ridiculed and uh, used as a, just as bad examples. But people who were writing it in the end of the 90s, of course, uh, were not the first once, and here I have, unfortunately, a very small picture, couldn't find a better one, the highly recommended um, journal, issue of the journal World Wide Web Journal that was published in 1996, also as digital folklore sold out, but some texts are also online. Um, that's uh, materials of the conference, of World Wide Web Conference, many interesting insights of people who are thinking where do we go now with the web in 1996, but also an interview with uh, Tim Berners-Lee where he um, talks about how he, what he thinks about the web, how he, what is his opinion. And from this um, interview comes the quote that I also put on the, um, as a title of my lecture, but let me please quote some more. So what, when he said that he was asked um, the question from the interview, how about the first baby pictures on the web or the lists of music CDs or the confessional aspects of the web? Surely you didn't see that coming. He answers, no, but in all the initial talks we gave about the web, we explained that you would have your own private web and that still has not come yet. Question. The idea of the home page evolved in a different direction. Answer. Yes, with all respect, the personal, the personal home page is not a private expression. It's a public billboard that people work on to say what they're interested in. That's not as interesting to me as people using it in their private lives. It's exhibitionism, if you like, or self-expression. It's openness, and it's great in a way. It's people letting the community into their homes, but it's not really their home. They, might, they may call it a home page, but it's more like the gnome in somebody's front yard than the home itself. Um, let's uh, then uh, take in all the quote in their account and also what he said after. Uh, let's be fair and um, uh, not say now that he suggested to people just to get out of the web with, with, with their personal home pages. But it was more that uh, he was expecting that uh, there would be something more like, more like uh, what is called today Internet of Things, and also that, th that uh, communication or self-expression will be more channel channeled, like it happens now in Facebook. It will be more organized, and people will have simpler and more comfortable tools to do it. And uh, I don't really think he wanted to uh, uh, offend anybody with this. And uh, I also think you know, that people were not really offended because, again, I don't think that many actually read it, what he said in this magazine. Um, <clears throat> because people were busy making web pages at that time. They were not interested in what Tim Berners-Lee was saying. And uh, not only they were interested, they, not only they were building their web pages, but they were positioning these pages as their homes. Their homes in, their, in cyberspace, in web, in a new universe. Like here on this, you can, hello, where, welcome to my home in cyberspace. Welcome to the home of Flint's Billy. 
Hello, I'm Joe Carlos Ramos, and this is my home on the web. Here's text would be a bit uh, um, too, maybe too small. Um, I hope you can still read it, but uh, um, you know, sometimes people, uh, but the main thing that uh, somebody is talking um, or using the metaphors just in language, not, it's not necessary to make it to design it as a home, as a house, yeah? but to use all these words and to suggest to people to come in to excuse for the dust and uh, things like this. Um, Another one, yeah, again here, please come on in and make yourself at home. And uh, uh, some of the next uh, uh, examples, what I have here, it's where people um, deliberately were using pictures of their houses, and you had to enter through the door, and... Uh, uh, didn't put a link here, but this would be that every window is a link to a particular site, so it's also at that time uh, was dominating web design, this metaphorical design and the idea to imitate the house, something what looks more advanced, but again this spatial um, idea that it is a space and it's your house. This one, I put a link here because, uh, yeah, we know it looks like a classic old page, star backgrounds and uh, um, 3D text, but it's interesting here what happens in the, what happens further, that there is a, there is a real space and it belongs, it's a, let's say, in this, uh, it's a, uh, airport, and you continue to, so you are navigating in the, through the real space. There are quite uh, an amount of such examples where you can see the combination of out there and something very, very real, like the person was trying to imitate the uh, existing Mm, existing environment. What do I have as the next one? Or, uh, yeah, families also put in their um, houses on, online. And uh, this is our family home on the World Wide Web. Surf on in and make yourself comfortable. I like very much uh, this example where, where, though you don't see the um, house here exactly, but uh, I put here the link to the about page and uh, in the bottom where the person talks about himself, he finishes. And by the way, that house in the home button below really is my house. So, you know, people were very occupied with uh, making buttons, navigations. Uh, nobody trusted or wanted to give all the credit to this back and forward button and wanted to have their own homes. And uh, this, uh, if it's really to make it really personal, you make a f photograph of the, your own house and this is the button where you go to the home. So people took it really very um, serious. You can stare at this house a bit longer and I will quote from the whole, the whole internet catalog. In 93, they were already talking about the um, possible future that there will be other home pages. The home page provided by CERN is a good entry point into the web. It points you to a lot of resources fairly quickly. However, there are lots of reasons to want you to want your own home page. You may be a doctor with absolutely no interest in physics. You may therefore want a home page that takes you directly to subject headings for biology, medicine, and related topics. Uh, you see, this is uh, sometimes we um, 
of, I mean, at this moment, probably in general, nobody is interested. But uh, at a certain moment, there was this shift that home page started to mean not just the first page that you have in the browser where you follow links, but it started to mean that the, there is, that is your personal home page. It is your home. And this is thanks to people who started to design it like their own homes. And then there was, of course, the next uh, step, and home page started when uh, web production became bigger. Home page started to mean the first page of the website, whatever it is. And today, when we talk about, when, the, when we say home page, actually what we mean are these old pages, old personal web pages, when you could still talk about homes, when you can still talk about pages at all. Yeah, because now, this all is quite different. And uh, <clears throat> this one, you know about uh, example where I would want to... Hmm, where is my link? There is no link here. The time through 1979. Uh, there is a phrase, this is a couple who describe their, how they met. And this, I think, these are very important words. This page is where we started expressing our love for each other long before we were living together. It was our home while we had no mutual home. And the one, in this, the next one is maybe more minimalistic. This is the only house we can afford. You can't have a real house, but you can make a, you can you can have a personal home page. So homes, houses, castles, or cabin, cyber cottage. Uh, own little corner in the galaxy, knock the cottage door to enter. My home in cyberspace. And other uh, welcomes that give you an idea, also visually, but also in words, that people are talking about uh, building their houses or homes or castle or what the castles whatever you call it uh, in uh, uh, out there in cyberspace in outer space they are going away and they could call it like here also layer it could be realm and uh, corner of cyberspace whatever so they're very different uh, also um, uh, names that people would give to their places, to their homes. And uh, it is not, you know, uh, after this, all these years looking through the archive and taking, taking different pages as lair, realm, corner, uh, home, house, you also see the, you really see the difference. It's not only just animations on the um, star backgrounds. And now today, when you look at this page, then somebody is uh, welcoming everybody to the universe. I think you recognize the style. You know that this is a, a style of the web page of the 90s. Because also, even if you never have seen it, there, we are surrounded now uh, by the productions where people, the designers of today, they uh, learned to imitate this style very well. You know how to do it. Um, so this uh, uh, style is recognizable, we can easily find words to describe it, and uh, very often it's like everything what is said about uh, um, this time, um, of the, about the uh, appearance of the web, as if, as if it is the most important. But if you read the announcement for this lecture, I promise to you to say that it's not the most important thing, how these things looked but uh, uh, what they really stand for. And uh, let me then, for, on this purpose, first show to you a little video with some.
Kim. So now three pieces again. It's, uh, I have much more hundreds, but it's just a compilation of some for purposes like this lecture, just to make you curious about it. So you've seen here um, many pages that all you can say eclectic. They are very animated, right? And uh, um, the and also you've seen the welcome plane on all of them, which is what all what puts them all together. And uh, so, but what is uh, important about this, uh, all these uh, things that you've seen now? It's not uh, crazy animations, not uh, very colorful backgrounds, not even this frame set, what you see now. And not an animation by itself, uh, not the thing that this GIF is animated, but mostly that it is transparent. You know, it isn't transparent background. And uh, it is a transparent background to appear on uh, many different backgrounds, to be used by many people on whatever uh, background of their page is and also whatever the subject of their page could be. So the Mm, you probably also noticed that some years ago there's the GIFs, animated GIFs came back and everybody was uh, making them again and talking about them and museums were exhibiting them um, in their, and buying them for their <laughs> permanent mm, collections and it was always about animation. Um, and uh, never about this transparency, though it was what was so important, that people were making graphics that would have to be or could be used by others on their web pages. So it was about building, it was about creating the building blocks for the web. And in general, I would state that it's uh, by creating your web page, you were uh, not you were building the web. Not only because it was growing because your page is there, but because everything what you had there would be reused, content and graphics and scripts or whatever. Here is the example from one of the old books. What's the difference in between transparency and no transparency? And some of the early gifts, you know, they are not animated but you may know them because they were taken by many and used, so Scully, of course, on, on the on X-Files pages. Yeah, but it uh, would be unfair not to mention also animated GIFs, and this one that still survived, and also the DAF that is flying through the contemporary uh, pages um, as well. Uh, and also, again, on the same purpose to be used on many different web pages. This one, uh, I just took, a, I made a, a GIF out of the video that was popular now in Russia. Um, there is a series now on YouTube about the history of Russian internet, like for the first time, because Russian internet has a very um, interesting history that is not actually connected very much to the Western internet. And I liked it very much how the person who made the first uh, um, site, uh, lib.ru, the first site that you can download books for free, how he shows how actually he made his website. He took uh, Tim Berners-Lee website and was just uh, ch uh, taking his code and changing picture with his own picture. It's, of course, now just a, 
uh, video and uh, maybe s just some compositing. Uh, but uh, in any way, it is, uh, uh, you know, even Tim Berners-Lee website, or maybe first and foremost, Tim Berners-Lee website was used as a building block and others were uh, making something out of this. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, to quote another web design manual, jazz up your website in the weekend. Um, they, uh, they were uh, recommending to people to think about what you put on your web page, to think what it should be about. Uh, and they say the early, mm, on the, in the early life on the web, there weren't many pages, but there were many excited, curious surfers. You could take almost anything, pictures of your cat, obscure inside jokes about your colleague, data from arcane research project, and slap it on the web. For better or worse, most surfers are now much more selective. Um, yeah, and this is... Uh, the uh, big question, um, and uh, another big, um, big question for me, and was big question for people who were building their web, web pages. What is my web page about? Okay, I welcome to the to my hope on the web, but am I am I interesting enough? Am I uh, do I possess some special knowledge, or can I make something so exciting that it's worth it. And that's why I, s I say that making a web page, it's really, um, it's made people ask very many existential also questions. And uh, if we now also would try to think what were these reasons and what are the, what were the genres of these pages, what uh, um, I would, uh, or, I mean, if you would now ask me, I would uh, uh, I wouldn't know where to start and where to stop because there was a big, big a huge variety and there were many different reasons to make a, a web page and fortunately now in archive I also can see, um, I also can categorize and to research the pages not only because of some structural characteristics um, but uh, also because of what are they about. And it's completely another story. And uh, yeah, again, what I want to say that, uh, of course, there are a lot of uh, fan pages. You would make um, pages for, uh, if you're a fan of Backstreet Boys, if you hate Backstreet Boys, if you love Han Hanson or hate. Um, and um, um, there were... Uh, yeah, of course, if you're, if you're expecting the child, you would make a, a web page. Uh, a very uh, strong and sad, um, powerful tradition to make pages in memory of somebody who died. And, uh, um, this, uh, uh, and uh, they are also um, like uh, something what um, uh, should be, um, I think, also properly researched because um, um, this was um, something you can, uh, one thing then you make a web page when your child is born, and uh, then there are pages that are made by parents who lost their children. And these are real monuments, monuments on the web uh, that you could see that people thought that they would stay there forever. And also they saw it, that maybe through these monuments, because it is also online in such a, um, new and promising space, but this is also not just a monument, but a pay place where you can talk through which you can reach your children, or so, in general, people who are dead. So people were making, taking all this very serious. And uh, very unexpected, I mean, now I just give examples of what it could be, all such things that you would make a web page if you have a SETI system. Um, I also, <clears throat> it's just a, again a meta comment, um, what is precious, I think that people were leaving the messages on their web pages, on the very first, on the home page of the home page, describing why. They, they were talkative. Yeah? It was always why I'm making a website, What's, uh, what are my plans, and why I stopped to make this now, and uh, what I'm 
maybe uh, going to do next. Some of this, you know, I'm mostly showing to you screenshots because they're very spectacular, but some uh, things, they are not inside the screenshot. So I will read for you some confessions. Hello, welcome to my pointless web page. This page was started so that I would have something to do to keep myself occupied, that I am bored, so that I would not think about my ex. Now I don't think about him, so I don't really work on the page anymore. Another quote. Hey everyone, the first thing you are wondering is where are some pics. Well, it's gonna be a while till I put up pics. Another thing, why make a, make a web page? Haven't I gone crazy? No, just hell aboard. Well, also to keep me away from Counter-Strike. And as you can also hear, see here, this is a very popular uh, snap of, from the archive. Greetings and welcome to my world. I am Josh and I am building this web page to have some fun. My life is boring. If it wasn't for the internet, I would die of boredom. I think these confessions are really precious, and they also, also say that there were very many different reasons to make your web page. Uh, what I didn't... Yeah, but the person who once wrote the uh, very... Two, uh, two books uh, that were making special fun about amateur web production, uh, Flanders, the web pages that suck, and Son of the web pages that suck. Um, here once wrote, um, we could give you some fancy reasons for creating a website, but there are only three simple reasons for creating a website. To make money, to disseminate information or an opinion, to stroke your little ego. Yeah, I would uh, really disagree with this, and uh, I think I also see more pages, as he did, to say that there are many different reasons to make a uh, web page, and uh, what is interesting, that people were really thinking about it. You can see it was a process. Yeah, what I'm doing, why I'm doing this, and also then why I stopped to do it. Um, another quote, not from this website, but related. The reason of having, having a site was not really clear. Most probably, it was my need to learn how to design and publish websites. I am very happy to say that whatever you see on this page has been done by me, using HTML tags. No crappy web page editors here, thank you. And I am very proud of this Effect. You know, uh, yeah, as you can see from the, this example and uh, the next one, if you understand a bit of HTML, it means that uh, uh, if you see such things on the main window, it means that somebody really made something wrong. They didn't really learn HTML. So it's now here only, I show it to you, it's mostly on the illustrative purposes, yeah, to attract attention to HTML. Um, but uh, the thing is that uh, uh, it was, it, I think it's a very interesting reason to make a web page because you want to learn how to make it. And this is a knowledge, this, uh, when we were learning to make HTML, we were learning to program. And uh, we were getting a lot, and not only HTML, but to learn how to, when we learn how to put uh, files from our computer to the server, we were learning how a network is functioning, how connections are built. And all these things, um, unfortunately, were taken from us, together with this, all these competences were taken away from us, together with these knowledges that were announced soon um, to be um, not our business at all. But of course, in a way that you would think that it's just nice for you that you have to do less online. Um, but by the way, uh, the idea that you should not mess up with HTML, you should not know how things work and mix up with uh, um, code, they also, they, they are not that new. Tim Berners-Lee himself in the same interview, interview was saying, 
I was surprised that people were prepared to write HTML. In my initial requirements for this thing, I had assumed as an absolute precondition that nobody would have to do HTML or deal with URLs. If you use the original World Wide Web program, you never see a URL or you have to deal with HTML. You are presented with the raw information. You then input more information. So you are linking information to information, like using a word processor. That was a surprise to me that people were prepared to painstakingly write HTML. And uh, later in 2001, he also again repeated in the we within the web, I never intended HTML source code, the stuff with the angle and, and brackets to be seen by users. By the human readability of HTML was unexpected, but the human readability of HTML was an unexpected boon. To my surprise, people quickly became familiar with the text and started writing their own HTML documents directly. Um, yeah, writing uh, uh, pages uh, by themselves and also looking at source code of other pages and also seeing yourself as a potential source for, pe for other uh, people, for other pages, um, I think there's a very a special um, and uh, um, vital characteristics of that time that we shouldn't uh, forget. Um, so, but again, you, you, I think you could um, sense that, or from your experience with the web now, that it's uh, quite. Um, uh, it is in the it, it is in the past. I am talking it about it as talking about the past. Um, there, what was what was happening at a certain moment, and um, apart from people starting to become tired, stop it to. Um, uh, look at source code of each other or write HTML and just following what industry is, uh, was offering to them. Um, I think there was um, what happened with also with the pages and there were still pages. There was a time when there was a shift, quite a visible shift from my, like here, on, not on this page, but in all the pages I showed you, from my to me. Uh, this, uh, my world, uh, my home, even my page, this is something different than me represented online. Though maybe for untrained eye, all this page can look quite similar. But this uh, moment that, um, <clears throat> it was not a moment, it was a process that people started to move from my to me. And this my, what we had, it could be quite um, different. First of all, it, it could be, um, you know, uh, my self, my another self. So this is the place where I'm somebody else. And West Hollywood community, community where cross dressers were making their web pages could be a very good um, um, example uh, for, for me. Um, <clears throat> for this. But something also uh, not so big and so dramatic, look, it's uh, my page for Sandra Bullock. Yeah. Or the next one, uh, David's corn page. So it's my corn. So all these things that people made for celebrities, for famous people, even before they got their official web pages or parallel to it. It was a very interesting understanding of what my can be. Something what is not yours, what will never be yours. But here on this space you could say it's my. Because I invested my time into it or because I love them. And uh, uh, like uh, this is from a teenager made in 97, uh, Stephen King on the net. It was much bigger at that time than uh, what Stephen King uh, had himself. Yeah, so it was uh, um, uh, this my 
like also, it is my Pamela Anderson because I scanned pictures of Pamela Anderson and I put them online. Yeah? Um, so this is a place and time where you could allow to yourself to make things like this and um, to also to possess something. Uh, there are the times, um, <clears throat> the, you know, it's also the race uh, at that time of the collections of graphic elements. Like, um, and uh, you also, sometimes you couldn't understand what people mean with my. Like, my animated GIFs. Okay, you go there, you think this is the GIFs you made. No, but this is the GIFs that you just collected. But anyway, they are mine. Or you're, again, my animated GIFs, but then, small. yeah, I didn't make these pictures, I animated them. So all these different degrees of how you make uh, uh, products, how you can make medium to be yours. And uh, there are uh, wonderful examples to be found um, of them. Um, I, had, I have here left for you the page, one of not many that is still alive, and it's not on Jewish cities. It is, uh, uh, in, in this sense, maybe if you have time at home, you can research it. It's a uh, um, lady, um, Afro-American, uh, retired uh, woman who decided to make uh, web pages and also to create sets for other people. Sets are this, you know, col uh, you collect different elements and you make design out of them, and then others can use it. But also in her, uh, it's collection of her elements, of her gifts, of her designs, but then it's also when you go to the uh, main page and follow many other topics, you will see that this is a, a history of um, Florida and uh, of um, Florida plantations and uh, uh, families and uh, tragic and funny and whatever things can be found there. I leave it for you here because it's very rare that it still exists. Things like this, they only, usually you can access them uh, through the archive that are really dead. And then, uh, you know, the things, things started to change from my, whatever it is, to me, then, me, then I myself, as I am, became the main content of the web pages. Um, like, I'm also showing to you this example. They are mm, not at all to blame people, but uh, to show also the, the time and the connection to the, um, that they were not forced, but directed in this <laughs> directed in this direction. For example, here again, you know, you see that this is it is a vanity profile. Then Yahoo bought GeoCities. It ruined the system that there were thematic neighborhoods and uh, suburbs in this neighborhood, and uh, forced people to register their own names or invented names, but names. Um, so. Um, and also they, at that time, introduced the um, template that was called Personal Page Blue, um, where, first of all, it was supposed that you are not making, uh, here is a template for you if you got a baby, here is a template for your dog page, template for CV, and personal page. And the name of this template was Personal Page Blue, and it was a default in the uh, builder, and that's why there are so many of them. I'm now connecting to, to the archive, to my database. So there are 2,121 pages where you can see how people are fighting and trying to fit themselves into this template. Sometimes it works, sometimes not. Sometimes they make fun out of it. but. Uh, um, you know, the, but Yahoo also sort of made fun out of them people, or I don't know, or of themselves, because this is their template, this is also the text that was in template. And so, and uh, I should say that many people didn't bother to change it. It just stayed <laughs> like this. Maybe they caged, 
Diaho in this catch, case um, catch the mood of the people. Yeah, and this is, you know how this uh, all uh, um, ended, that uh, for, as soon as you stop to make things mine, as, so, as soon as you stop to show uh, with something what is mine, and it became only me, just you became a subject and you became a metadata, and you started to be, you are, you are the only thing you should um, contribute to the network, you should make your photos, you should write how your day was, so, and you think that there is so much respect to you, to your personality, but in fact what is uh, needed um, from you now that you don't make web pages, but you only uh, fill different databases with your, uh, with images of yourself, that they are sold to advertising company or that they are uh, fed to machine learning. Uh, so all this is completely, it's clear how it's happening. And these pages, they were ridiculed and uh, um, they were um, laughed about and uh, they were always recommended to remove them. And it was also made on purpose because uh, companies didn't want to make these not semantic pages, not pages where you can't ex extract me metadata. And people were getting... Yeah, people were getting tired and they were leaving and they were following first personal page blue, then uh, Facebook and then other networks. And then uh, there was, uh, after some years of uh, like boredom, there was a big praise given to this me, yeah, or to you. Yeah, like you are, uh, you became a person of the year, you because you're upload your videos on YouTube and because uh, you are the user on the, inter on the internet. So this was, uh, this was in 2006. And just uh, going to the, to the end now, uh, another, so besides being a building block to the, of the, for the uh, World Wide Web with your own page, besides being a source code, uh, an HTML tutorial, um, you could also be a node, and many people were a node in the network. Um, you know, again, uh, it was, um, I would not agree with the author of uh, web pages that suck, who wrote, who stated very big on one of the pages, if your website does not have content, you don't really have a website. Yeah. You have a website even if you don't have a content. And I think I, I showed it to you before, and these are some other examples that people didn't have content, but they found links to what was interesting to them. And they were directing, they were the node, so you can come to this page, and from this page you can go here and there. So I think it is a, a incredible times also when uh, it's a video, with the sound, but it's not important because I filmed this website. You see, it's somebody's uh, personal web page, but what this page gives to people, it gives to you the, uh, it <laughs> like the other, the opposite to what we have right now. Now you go to search engine and you find something, and here there is a personal page where you find search engines. Yeah, so completely um, different type, and this com was completely not unique. And something, some once a person made for Christmas, it's a Christmas tree where every uh, bullet is a link to something else, uh, to other companies. Homes with home manual rights. There are sites that help you find people, sites that help you find jobs, sites that help you find other websites. And this is exactly what we see here. Um, <clears throat> creating killer websites. There are plenty of sites around the web that exist only to provide a web mouse potato with huge lists of links to pages that are informative, entertaining, or cool. If you... Uh, you know, uh, so these pages that only provide 
uh, links. This one is also a wonderful collection to links how to make HTML. Um, uh, also other resources, and again, links to search engines. Um, interesting now, I think you can uh, uh, relate to this, the websites, uh, how things look now. Uh, still, we still have websites, but I agree that it's so often that you, uh, when you make a website, it's a portal, also can be seen as a portal, as a collection of links, but it would be links to your profiles on different networks. And also, there is a web page, but there is nothing more. There is a Facebook, me on Facebook, me on Twitter, me on Instagram, all these buttons. And it's not only persons, but also the institutions. Um, it's just a reality. Um, and this is also, I think, uh, it's not one of the most dramatic screenshots that I have, not the most dramatic pages where people say that I'm stopping to make a web page. Yeah, but I think it's, uh, it's very much connected, uh, relates to what I was just saying, that, uh, yeah, there was a step by step, there was no need anymore for somebody to provide information to somebody. You have Google or sometimes you have Wikipedia, or Backstreet Boys finally put their act together and uh, have a much better website. And also they sued me. Yeah. So you can't, what can you do? Um, yeah, so this, uh, <clears throat> this today's web uh, of me does not need that people link and that of course doesn't that they learn HTML or show their source code. It's just not our area of competence anymore. Um, the, in, in, and in this transition from me to my, so they were constantly, from my to me, sorry, they were constantly um, ridiculed and uh, also said that uh, get real life. Yeah, what are you making a web page? Well, you don't have a real life. And now it looks like as if everybody had real life, but uh, I'm absolutely certain that to... Uh, keep your Instagram feed, for example. It demands much more uh, work than, uh, uh, than making a website, or much more commitment, or much uh, more going away of something what was supposed to be the real life. Um, so, and plus to it, I should also say that what on the way... Um, this, I will quote again uh, Vincent Flanders, who wrote, uh, he was web pages the sucks, he was all the time, you know, like on every page, it's ugly, 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 this ugly and that ugly, and uh, stop using this and stop using that. And at the same time, he was also writing, and um, that people, why people are so serious about their personal websites. You, as he, he writes, you can tell someone their dog is ugly, their children are ugly. You can even tell them their spouse is ugly, but don't you dare tell them that their personal web page is ugly. <laughs> yeah, but then again, he was really the one uh, who, would, uh, uh, who would spend, I don't know, all the, he could turn every word from his vocabulary into <laughs> offending people who were making their um, websites. And uh, what is curious that, uh, I don't know, in 2016 he, uh, he was before very popular, uh, very um, not popular, also popular, but uh, active on Twitter, tweeting all the time, but this is his, fame, uh, his uh, last tweet, what we have, and it's from two years ago, and first he writes, people keep asking me about what's the future of web design. It's whatever Google tells us to do. People kill us, keep asking me what web design in 2016. Simple. It's whatever Google wants it to be. Um, this is, uh, uh, it's very, you know, uh, bitter also to hear it from him because he was offending amateur um, page makers to praise professional uh, web designers. But what we got on the way 
uh, that we also lose in professional, we lost this profession of web design. We lost something what we've seen very dear or about it, or me also as a teacher, that you can be a um, designer and a coder at the same time. It got completely uh, in the directions that uh, I hoped would never happen. So I was always saying to students uh, that web design is a place where you can be um, artist and the coder at the same time. And there was, uh, first it was like a future, because uh, agencies never wanted to have it. And then there was a moment when it worked, and now it is uh, completely killed because you're, mm, you, we lost this uh, culture completely, and again, it's just it's Photoshop and developers on another way, and, but all this is also completely suppressed by uh, uh, libraries and uh, scripts and styles that are coming from uh, Apple, Facebook, and Google. So it's very true what he uh, writes in the end. And plus to it, something what is called, now I don't know if you noticed or not, artificial design intelligence. It is absolutely lächerlich, yeah, but, uh, uh, but at the same time, it's like another step. Now you don't even have to choose a template. Just say who you are, and this is your website. Yeah. Um, I am, it is actually the end uh, of my talk, and in the end of my talk, I would like to come back to dogs, not to dogs, but to um, dogs again, and uh, to spend some moments in the collection, which I started to make um, some years ago, and it's in relation to the, this cartoon from 1993. It's called On the Internet, Everybody Knows You Had a Dog. was saying that uh, she or he made the page. Yeah, so pretending that the dog is a webmaster. Sometimes with the help of human being, or sometimes not helping, or making, say, also saying maybe even something nasty about the, um, the human being. Yeah, but the dogs that uh, were <laughs> appearing as if um, they are on these web pages, as if they are webmasters like also the one um, that, was, uh, that we had uh, on the second uh, picture today. And I think that, uh, you know, uh, we now, in uh, 2019, we look um, at these pages. I will for a moment go here. Again, we look at these pages, and uh, even when a dog says, uh, hello, welcome to my page, we... Uh, understand that it's uh, an exaggeration, yeah? that it is not true, that it's probably uh, was a um, the human who, who made this uh, web page for the dog. But I can imagine that uh, uh, if I would give this lecture like in, maybe in 10 years, it would be uh, younger people and uh, people who never seen these pages at all, and also people who live in the reality where it is uh, completely possible that uh, some that uh, 
uh, <coughs> there are some sensors on the dock that make the web page automatically, or not a web page, or maybe some uh, stream or profile or whatever you call it, so that uh, it will look okay. This is an old. This is now there are fancy profiles of the dogs, and this is how dogs make, made web pages uh, in 1996. And this is actually why, yeah, why I was here now and uh, why I was showing to these pages to you to tell that no, these were not dogs, these were real people who spent their time to, uh, to learn HTML, to cut out animated GIFs, to make their source code readable, to facilitate also others to make their web pages. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you very much for this fascinating <laughs> trip <laughs> back in the 90s. Um, I think we have uh, some time for questions. Um, there is something called Catchbox. Some of you may know this already. Um, if you have a question, um, you will bring the box uh, and um, please speak right into the box and uh, take it close to your head so we can understand everything. Thank you. There are no questions. <laughs> no first question. So I ask a, ask a question to you. Um, so I'm interested also in the in the in the role of of, of interaction between users, and um, I mean there are some differences between these old uh, personal web pages and what we call social media today. But still, there is, are also some similarities. For example, the guest book. So I think guest books uh, has was really important for these old personal guest. Uh, web pages, mm -hmm. and it was important to to comment on the web mm -hmm. page, but not uh, on the person. Is this right? I mean, because today, if we may, if we make comments on social media, comments are uh, most of the comments are on the person, or maybe on the style of photography, etc. Mm -hmm. uh, why do? Is there anybody here who remembers what guest book is? Okay, so <laughs> um, I think, uh, first of all, guest books, I think it was really a tragedy. Or I can imagine if guest books would really work, the web page culture would live longer. Because uh, um, a lot of people got frustrated because of this very clumsy feedback um, software and also be usually guest books they were from an, another uh, party and they were the first things they, that would stop to work and you would have to update it and uh, plus to it they you can see from this from people really begging on the, the first pages please don't leave my uh, don't leave my page without saying something in the guest book or uh, leave a message in my guest book and I will leave a message in your guest book. Yeah, or like put in the guest book very much on the top, you see how people were um, uh, not uh, fighting, it's the wrong word, but uh, yeah, fighting with this uh, feedback system. So this is really something what uh, didn't work at that time. So it was a it was a bad system. I also remember that it was something that I would never put it in 96, would, would never put it on my page, a guest book. Only email. Counter. Hmm? Counter. Counter. Yeah, I also thought that I'm too cool <laughs> <laughs> for that. And uh, uh, in the in these pages, what I look at uh, right now, there are of course a lot of jokes about counters, but uh, also I don't have these examples right now. Also, the um, sayings that um, you see, that it was a, because it was a measure of your popularity. It was something important that uh, it was uh, would be said. What you see, you see, there are not a lot of. Um, uh, 
the, the number is not high in the counter, but it's only because I had to uh, install another counter. My, oh, you have to add 10,000 to this, because this is what I lost because I had to have a, um, to install a new one. Um, the, yeah, such things as uh, all this vanity, um, vanity features didn't work, and uh, as soon as it started to work somewhere else, people wanted to use them. But it was not your question. <laughs> what did you ask about the social networks? And guess yeah, the question, uh, I think it, it was sort of my question, because the question was about similarities or interlacings between mm -hmm. old... Uh, interaction culture on mm -hmm. all the web pages and today's social media but it i think it's interesting what you just told us about the, the counters because it was like a, an early version of a measurable um, interaction and mm -hmm. um, numbers have been important too also in the 90s and also before mm -hmm. um, social media and numbers of comments and friends yeah it was important. And then there was something uh, related to it. There were awards. Yeah, people were giving awards to each other. And this is what... Uh, and you would have... It would be cool to have uh, uh, several pages of the awards. And people were cheating. You would, you know, you would put on the, on the front page, it would say awards one, awards two, awards three. Link one. And then... There were honest users who would put on the page 110 and on the page 210 and on the page 310 awards. But there were also those who would put one pro, pro page. <laughs> so all these little tricks to make, to show that you're more popular, um, yeah, than you really are. But something, one thing that really worked is that uh, uh, you would get feedback per, per email. Somehow, guestbook or not, um, but email was something what people would send. I think it, because also this, like, of the feeling I came to somebody's home, I have maybe to, uh, to say hello, and I didn't have a, a classic homepage. I had this uh, a project. My boyfriend came back from the war, uh, where you had to go through many, many pages, and when you're at the last one, and there was my email. Um, and uh, when in times when there were maybe 10 people looking at my page, there were, I would get five emails a day, but 10 people were looking. And uh, now I don't, I don't know how many, but it's, it has uh, a lot, a lot of hits. It's a very popular web page. But maybe once a year I get an email from this, uh, from this uh, last page of the project. And it's also only because it's from students who were assigned to go till the last page <laughs> and send me a message because their teacher was maybe at my lecture and heard me complaining about this. Hello. So I would like to know if you could uh, take a look into the future. Are we going to see a renaissance when they close down Facebook tomorrow, maybe? Mm -hmm. Or something else like that? What is in 10 years? Mm -hmm. If you do a forensic in 50 years, look back, what would it be like? Uh, what it will be like with the archive of Facebook or what, it will, be, what will people do online? About the you and having my own homepage, which today people sometimes have in Facebook or mm. somewhere else. Three billion people have a Facebook page and there's some troubles I around Facebook today, so maybe it's different tomorrow. Uh, it will be... Uh it will be different tomorrow. I, I should say that I myself, I mostly observe what is happening at the moment. I don't think what only a part of fantasizing how dogs will make the pages themselves. I, I can't say what's in the plan of the other um, companies, but of course I also read all the um, 
plans of Google and Facebook that it will be artificial intelligence and you don't have to you don't have to even to type something you have to think and it will appear um, all this uh, utopias or anti utopias but it's but in this there in, in this um, um, connection i think it's interesting what to see how it was happening step by step like after something like geocities or not geocities personal pages somewhere else um, there was live journal which is not so a european thing but in us and in russia it was a big thing it's like a um, content uh, or a social network but uh, advanced one you could communicate there so hmm? uh, then there was a um, or then there was uh, I remember how I thought, how, how can it be that people are leaving live journal to Facebook? Because on Facebook you can't communicate. How can it be that you are going from their more advanced system to something where less is possible? But there were really uh, waves um, going away. And it look, but then you see that uh, people, I see how people left Facebook for Instagram. And it became because it, it is a least effort. Yeah, and Facebook was clever to buy Instagram, and it belongs to, to them. But it's, uh, I think Instagram already killed the Facebook. And it's like, at, at this moment, I think it's the uh, ultimate way of this, what I call, me presented online. Maybe there is even um, better, in the nearest future, there will be better and there simpler ways to, um, to stream yourself but I, I don't, I can't say, what do you think? Do you ever think about it? What I think the about future? it all the time. 15 years ago, I was helping a company surviving the internet mm -hmm. uh, tsunami. And now I'm back 15 years later, and it's very interesting for me to mm -hmm. review. And right now, TikTok is very mm -hmm. big, and it's also about you. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think the notion about uh, artificial intelligence taking away all the trouble is also something we deal with uh, in our company. Mm -hmm. And uh, mm -hmm. I just, but it's so fuzzy, the future. So I think every weak signal from somebody like you would, it's very interesting to receive. <laughs> the, uh, in this, when we talk about um, uh, this future, because I'm more thinking about, I would be usually in such situation, I, I wouldn't be asked what I think would be there uh, after Facebook, but what will happen with Facebook archive? Because I am uh, looking into something that doesn't exist anymore. And here I should say that uh, uh, I, I don't, uh, nobody will ever, I don't think anybody will ever look at it and it's also not so important. The, it will be uh, not just uh, terabytes and not petabytes, it will be much more. And uh, um, yeah, and to, to set values and to say what's interesting, what is not. Um, look, like for me personally, it's not interesting, but there are a lot of uh, institutions that think how to, how to deal with this. Mm with the loss of um, in information. Uh, there is, um, yeah, because one thing is to, you can um, save the files, but what's after? Yeah, even with the big data. <coughs> we, what I started to say, that we have one terabyte. GeoCities archive is one terabyte. Uh, in, uh, I know that now it doesn't impress anybody. When we started in 2010, it was, wow, one terabyte. It was an expensive disk that we had to buy. And, um, yeah, you could Im impress somebody with this. But also, it's a lot of work to go through one terabyte. And then in 2013, the Dutch social network Hive was closed. I think it's also not known in Switzerland and even in Germany. It was a big competitor of Facebook for all the, from the beginning to, of 2000 till 2013. Um, a lot of people were doing their stuff there. And then it was closed uh, also quite uh, 
brutally, and the archive team saved 25 terabytes. But sort of there, nobody showed an interest in it. I made, before it was closed, I was making already, but we're on the primitive and uh, low level, was catching things and making something out of them, but it from, was from personal interest. But this archive lays and uh, it doesn't make sense to make something algorithmically with it, and I think it's also not very ethically, ethical and uh, to apply algorithms for such things. And uh, yeah, but there are also no people who would say I want to make it, because it also have to be many people, not just one Ole Lialina who sits and looks at 72 pages a day and makes her conclusions. <laughs> I think there's one, two, two last questions maybe. In Zurich, we have a museum of digital arts, and I've inquired whether things like that could be deposited. They mm -hmm. do not have an archive. Every museum has an archive. Mm -hmm. So you mean they should go to the museum, or they? That's a place to store these things, isn't it? It is a place to, uh, or how to say, I am also the voice to insist that such things are, uh, they enter museums or enter archives. In MoMA in uh, uh, New York, yeah, they pay attention to uh, design, but uh, to the history of the web, they make archives, but it's design, professional design. Amateurs are, yeah, are amateurs. You have to insist and you have to show what's the, what's the value and also you have to find the form. And also, again, to make archive is one thing, and that, but to have people who go through this and uh, retrieve and um, consult the record and show it, it's, it's another work. But I thank you for your positive perspective <laughs> on how it should be. Last question, please. Yeah, um, thank you so much uh, for taking us, uh, or me personally, down the memory line. Um, and I, I have two questions. One is, have you ever reached out to someone who's on the website that you were you know, mm -hmm. uh, looking through? And second is, uh, you know, um, the selection of choices that you have shown here seem very cute and homely. Maybe it has something to do with the title. Mm -hmm. But during your exploration of this archive, have you come across something shocking, terrible, violent? And what has been your thoughts on that? Um, wait, the, the first question um, is, uh, Look, uh, one of my dramas, <laughs> because uh, it's many years, and uh, I tried to reach so many people, but these four interviews is everything I have. I think this, uh, I'm very proud of them. I learned a lot, and I also like that people read them and uh, um, uh, quote them, and these are the greatest story. But... Uh, one thing, people were very talkative on their web pages, but because they were ridiculed and because they never learned to be respectful for what they made on, online, or on their web pages, they preferred also to forget it. And uh, they don't really, some, some, so let's put like this, there in many cases I can't reach somebody because no contact because I fi can't find who it is. Sometimes people refuse, but mostly emails bounce, and uh, many people are dead. Uh, and uh, I also noticed I was too late, like two, three years ago, uh, and uh, I could talk with very many interesting people, and it's also because, you know, we forget, or somehow in the imagination or in the memory, of uh, in cultural memory, <laughs> it is that it was made that the web in the 90s was made by kids, like they're saying 13 years old on GeoCities, yeah, as a uh, picture of this. But no, these were um, people who were 
who stopped to work and started to make web pages, and they created a lot of stuff that was also used by others. Yeah, mm, you said, uh, uh, what was the second question? That I, I showed so many cute stuff, but... Mm -hmm. um, I um, <clears throat> of course I, I've seen everything online <laughs> on, also on the old web pages and uh, shocking things but Geocities is not really the place to look for something where you can see violence or pornography because it was you were not allowed to do it there but people still did and uh, now we have to be careful uh, because we, how do we, <clears throat> uh, the, the link I showed to you um, to one terabyte on Tumblr, it is where every 20 minutes a new snapshot of the web page is appearing since 2013. Starting in 1996, now the pages are from 2003. Yeah? So every 20 minutes there is a shot from, shot from the old web, and we have to look through them before, and very often we have to remove content, otherwise we will be blocked on Tumblr. So there was everything. But, and I also, of course, um, when I give talks, I try to show abstract pages where you don't really see and or can identify people. Though, again, <laughs> uh, on most of the pages were made, most, most is understatement, were made in hope to attract attention also to you as a real person. No. Okay, thank you very much. I think it was a very interesting <laughs> point uh, to, to end this discussion, how um, these old uh, pages pop up in a new uh, environment, uh, also not only in a new tech uh, technology environment, but also um, new governments, uh, governance and uh, law situation, so it's not possible uh, to show everything like it was in 1995 mm -hmm. or something. Um, thank you very much uh, for being here uh, tonight. Thank you very much for you, uh, Oli. It was a great pleasure, and um, we wish you all a uh, good night. Kommen Sie gut nach Hause. Dankeschön. Dankeschön. Thank you.